Suicide Squad comes to theaters this week in the United States, and with that said, it's time to dive in and rank all 11 DCEU movies from worst to best, but this time we're doing it in a tier list style. It should be a blast to do, and I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section, so make sure to leave your guys' thoughts, your ranking, and just as a point of reference, this is, of course, my list. Our lists are going to be completely different, but that's where we have those great conversations down there. Of course, going from chronological order as these has all come out, we will start with Man of Steel, which if you followed me for a bit, you know this is one of my favorite DCU movies and one of my favorite comic book films of all time. In fact, this is one of my favorite superhero films of all time, and as well as my favorite Superman film. This is the movie that made me fall in love with Superman, and to the point of reference... I love Henry Cavill's his character. I hope eventually we do get more of him in this world. I think we deserve that. He is such a respectful and really much brings a new light to this character who everyone kind of looked at him and been like, oh, he's kind of this Boy Scout and not. But reality is he has a lot more going to him. And I found this film to just be such an exhilarating take on this character. A dark and gritty one, in fact, that not everyone loves. And I respect that. But I absolutely love this movie. And for me... It, it has to go into S tier. I, I mean, for me, this is one of the best films, one of the best comic book movies I've ever followed, and I think it's one of the most underrated ones as well. And of course, coming up next is Batman v Superman. Now, this was such an anticipated movie. When it was announced at Comic-Con, everyone was flipping out. Ben Affleck as Batman is one of my favorite choices of casting ever. In fact, I just love Ben Affleck in this role. I think he absolutely proved every person wrong, embodying the likes of Batman and Bruce Wayne all into one, where I feel like most actors could do one or the other he pulled off both in such a shunning and stunning style for me with batman v superman the original cut of this movie was complete trash i don't even want to look at that original cut because it was so chopped up to bits but when you look at the ultimate edition a version that i absolutely love there are still some small issues in there but they are so minor to the point of I kind of overlook a lot of them just because of how well done I think Zack Snyder did with this. It's a layered story that I feel like for me actually has a lot of nice point of reference to it, especially as it comes down to between two of the biggest icons in pretty much comic book history, Superman and Batman going off at one another. But the build up to that is very smart. And for me, again, while a little bit overly long in certain plot points, I don't think needed to be in there. For me, the original edition is crap. But the Ultimate Edition, that version is at least an A from me. Again, I, I know a lot of people are very diverse on that film, but trust me when I say this, that original cut was crap and that would probably be in the D or C area. This version, I at least love. And of course, coming up next is the Suicide Squad, the original one. Directed by David Ayer. But we're not going to call that David Ayer's cut because that's not his original cut. He has disowned that version. And for good, for good reason. This is a movie that it was the first time that I went and saw a film in theaters and watched it and like had to talk myself into liking it because I was so disappointed in it. But for some reason, I was sitting there, I was like, well, maybe it wasn't that bad. And then I remember the next day I went and saw it again, and I sat there, and I was like, yeah, no, nah, this isn't great. This is, in fact, pretty shit. Um, this is not a good movie. Um, there are good elements to it. I would say most of the casting is great. Deadshot with Will Smith, awesome. Harley Quinn, Margot Robbie is a quintessential comic book casting of all time now. And, you know, overall, I did like the squad. I like the choices that they put in there. Katana, Rick Flagg, Boomer. Uh, even Killer Croc. I liked all those elements. And even Jared Leto's Joker, I don't hate. I just don't think they gave enough depth to him or even enough footage or time to develop this. In fact, that, that's really the biggest complaint with all of this. The two characters that got the most development at all was Will Smith and, of course, uh, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. That's it. That, that's it. But when it comes down to this movie, the action wasn't memorable, really. It looks cool. But overall, this is just a mess of a movie, a hodgepodge of themes and tones that just don't really mix. It's trying to be a Guardians of the Galaxy when it, the Suicide Squad are not the Guardians of the Galaxy. And this just became a movie that the first trailer was amazing. The second trailer started to worry me a bit, but I was still optimistic. And then when I finally saw the movie, I was like, yes. This is not a good movie. So again, I'm going to put it, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to give it an F. I'm not, I didn't like this movie. I, I really didn't. I, I think Margot Robbie and Will Smith make this film bearable and same with Viola Davis, but the rest of the movie, I just do not care to 
ever rewatch this one. And it's, I mean, th this is the bottomest of the bottom of it all. But of course, coming out in the next year, we also had Justice League and Wonder Woman. Now, let's start with Wonder Woman because this is the one that I think is a good movie. I enjoy the original Wonder Woman. I think the first act is good, the second act is excellent, and then the third act is just fine. It's just fine. It kind of slows down a bit, halts off a bit, and even the finale fight with Ares, while badass to watch, not the best stuff that I've seen in this franchise. I think Gal Gadot proved us all wrong is the fact that she could kill this role and that she absolutely was the Wonder Woman because while she was introduced in BVS, and I liked her for the screen time in there. This was very much our first big sampling size of her. And I thought she was excellent in the role. Chris Pine is also a great addition. And I love the tone. I love the war setting that they really much put us in. And the fish out of water nature that we got with Gal Gadot's Diane Prince. Again, I think the ending, the third act kind of holds this film off a bit. But I'm in the minority when people say this. I, I know I am. I know a lot of people put this would probably put this in the A or the S category. But I'm going to put it in a B. It's just one of the movies that I haven't rewatched too much in the DCU. And I don't crave to go back to as much but i do rewatch no man's land scene that that scene's incredible and of course we also have justice league which let's just start this off it's an f Th this movie's shit um the more and more that's come out about this movie it's just come about to be a very toxic movie that i don't even ever really want to go back and rewatch. hearing all the dismay and everything that kind of went on behind the scenes especially with joss whedon Ray Fisher, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, especially after Zack Snyder had to leave set. And for me, I found those elements very hard for me to ever really want to go back and rewatch this, especially now that Zack Snyder's version's out. I don't think this movie's like total garbage though. Like there are some entertaining moments to it. Again, I can just go watch the Zack Snyder Justice League, which has those exact same moments that I liked, but done better and edited better. So overall, I have no interest in ever rewatching this. This is just a toxic movie and it is absolutely an F. And moving right along, the next movie that came out in the DCU was Aquaman. Now, Aquaman's a movie that I sadly don't revisit too much, but I remember on that first watch, I was like, this thing is absolutely badass, awesome, and just a joyous ride. I don't think this movie's perfect. I do think it has a little bit too weird of tonal shifts and a couple weird things in here, but I actually will contend that this has some of the best action that we have ever seen in the DCEU yet, and I want to give credit to where credit is due. James Wan's direction and vision for this movie is superb and excellent, and it is one of my favorite things that I've ever seen James Wan direct and bring to life. Jason Momoa kills it in the role, Black Manta's a pretty badass character, and really the thing that I love about it is how comic accurate his mask and his suit were, but honest to God, Patrick Wilson's Orm was fantastic and probably one of my favorite villains in the DCEU yet. Now again, this movie is not everyone's cup of tea. I look at this as just a giant live action anime and it pretty much is, but for me and all those elements, I have a blast with this movie and I do think that this movie belongs in the B tier. I think this is a movie that absolutely grows on me the more and more I rewatch it, but again, it is one that I don't clamor to go back to as often as I should. Of course, guys, we have five more movies to rank on this tier list. If you guys are new here, please make sure to comment down below. Let me know your guys' thoughts, your ranking, as well as making sure to hit that like and subscribe button so we can keep talking movies over here on a daily basis. Point of reference, again, this is my list, not yours. So we're going to disagree, but that's okay. And coming up next, we have Shazam, which is one of my favorite comic book movies from the last couple of years. Now, that might have kind of just given away, but you don't know which one I'm going to put it in. The thing with Shazam that I absolutely love was the fact that the cast had Zachary Levi. If you go back and look on my channel, there is a live stream I did where I was freaking out that they had casted one of the most underrated actors, in my wholehearted opinion, to be Shazam, one of my favorite DC superheroes of all time. I relate to this character so much and for me just seeing that Levi was able to get this role meant the world to me because I grew up watching Chuck so like that just put a big smile on my face putting that aside though it was also directed by a horror director that I've been very much liking so far and Shazam has horror tendencies to it with, of course, the deadly sins that come into play. For me, when it comes down to Shazam, though, is the, the same feeling I remember I got when I watched the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man for the first time. And I hadn't felt that since I had watched that for the first time as a kid. Shazam brought those same feelings for me back, and I cannot wait to see the sequel. I do think the film's a little bit too long, and I do think the villain for here could have been written a little bit better. So that is why I'm going to put this one in the A category, but I absolutely love this one. There's a lot of nostalgia behind this one and really much enough 
I think Shazam is one of the best DCEU films yet. Of course, coming up next, we have Birds of Prey, Harley Quinn's first spinoff film in the entire DCEU. And this one seems to be a little bit regarding. Some people absolutely love this movie. Some people don't love this film, but still enjoy it. I love this movie as well. I think Kathy Yan absolutely knocked it out of the park with her direction. But for me, the thing that I really liked about this was the evolution of the Harley Quinn character herself and the direction that they kind of had Margot Robbie go in. And for me, this feels like a very personal story on Margot Robbie's behalf and as well as a very personal one in all of its own right. The way that they bring all these characters together and realistically, this shouldn't have been called Burley Birds of Prey. This should have been called a Harley Quinn movie and the Birds of Prey. I will still never understand the title. I do believe that that's what hurt the movie. But for me, looking at Harley Quinn, seeing this movie, it just put a big smile on my face. And every single time I go back to rewatch this one, it continues that. Great action set pieces in here. I want more of this entire cast, especially, can we please get more of Black Canary? Because she was fantastic in here. Ian McGregor was also great as Black Mask. And in general, Huntress, or is it Huntress with... um. Mary Elizabeth Weinstein, she was great too. I overall, again, love the cast, love the vibes of this, and I think this is just such a fantastic little DC film. So with that said, I'm going to put Birds of Prey in the A category. Coming up next, we have Wonder Woman 1984, which, my God, I already know. This is where it's... If you haven't been split with my list yet, this is absolutely where I'm going to split a lot of you guys. And honest to God, I'm just going to do it right now. Wonder Woman 1984 is an A for me. I think Wonder Woman 1984 was a fantastic sequel to the original Wonder Woman, absolutely doubling down on what made the first one great, but influencing itself to be very different into the comic book space right now. It is cheesy, it's overly long, and absolutely kind of weird and creative, but I loved that. I loved that for quite a few different reasons. One of the biggest reasons that I did love Wonder Woman 1984 is the fact that they really much dive into Diana Prince as a character the first one did it as well but the fish out of water nature that they actually do in here is the stuff with chris pine and the whole entire film feels like an homage to the original christopher reeves superman the richard donner superman if you want to address it to there rest in peace to him but for me you can feel that from the first flight that wonder woman gets here which absolutely put it in soared emotions throughout my entire body gal gadot is better than ever in this performance freaking pedro pascal is an incredible villain in here and the only thing holding this film back from being in the s tier for me is i didn't love cheetah as much as i did i think kristen wig does a great job in there i wish they just would have given a little bit more development to her but i love this movie and pretty much an homage to the original richard donner superman but I absolutely love this movie. I've already rewatched this one more than the original One Woman, and I can't wait to go back and dive into it again. Of course, coming out earlier this year was Zack Snyder's Justice League. We finally got to see it. And guys, my God, it was so worth the wait. This was such an event that me and my girlfriend who is also a giant fan of Zack Snyder and especially the DCEU. We got had a popcorn fest, a whole movie theater thing for the press screening that they sent to, to us. And I made these little like fun little movie tickets to kind of show and give to her and made it a whole date night, a whole event for us. And I, I'm dying to see this movie in theaters because I love Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think this is the epitome and one of the best Justice League and probably one of the best comic book films ever created. I think the only good thing of this film not coming out years ago is it would have been stripped down to under two hours and 30 minutes or even less than that if Warner Brothers really pushed its mandate on Zack Snyder. For me in this movie, the four-hour runtime flew by and it only really felt like two hours and 35 if anything. And I think this is pretty much the biggest takeaway. If you're wanting to look about a filmmaking and see how studios can interfere and how other things can change and just in general how editing and reshoots can change an entire story, watch this film and then go watch the original Justice League. It is point blank two while yes, the same story, the same characters, and some of the same villains, it is a completely different dynamic and a completely different tone shift. And in general, one is a better movie than the other. One is fucking great and one is dog shit now. And you can really much look at both. And while I used to compare the original Justice League version, the Joss Whedon cut, the being like, yeah, it's kind of like a Saturday morning cartoon fun flair to it. The Zack Snyder Justice League literally shoved that film into the ground, and this is the direction. Again, you can still keep the hopefulness and the optimism that they've done in some of the other films, and maybe not the drear and dread that this one has, but even then, it fits so well. I love the character dynamics. Every single person gets a standout moment, especially Cyborg in here, and of course, Henry Cavill's Superman. I fucking love this movie, and it is easily 
going to be in the S category. Of course, the latest film stars my boy King Shark Nom Nom. It is The Suicide Squad, directed and written by James Gunn. Now, this was one of my most anticipated movies of the year. So my expectations were through the roof. Every trailer, every poster, everything that I kept seeing for this movie, my expectations kept shooting up higher and higher than ever before. Especially after being so disappointed with the original version, which I don't even want to put David Ayer's name on there because it is not his movie. And if they were to release the Ayer cut, I I would be interested in seeing it. I don't think they ever will, but I'd be interested in seeing it. For me, what this Suicide Squad movie really much did was it infused and reinvigorated my love for the comic book genre. Because while, yes, I enjoy all the same stuff and the same tones that we get within the MCU, the DCU, or whatever other film wants to try their luck in the comic book field, I enjoy them. And I enjoy how they keep their tones and stuff like that. But there was one movie in the MCU that made me reinvigorate and fall back in love with the MCU because I wasn't totally in love with it yet. I loved Marvel Comics when I was younger, but the one movie that made me kind of turn this all around, and it wasn't Winter Soldier, which Winter Soldier was fantastic, it was Guardians of the Galaxy. What James Gunn did with that movie was bringing to life some of the weirdest and wackiest characters inside the Marvel Comics and making them work inside this tone and everything just made wonders for me and i was kind of expecting the same thing to happen with the suicide squad and it absolutely delivered i don't just think this is one of the best films in the dceu in fact i think this is one of the best comic book movies ever made it's absolutely in my top 15 of all time i know for a lot of you you must be saying oh that's blasphemy guys i have seen the film twice at this point and i can't wait to see it again and again and again and the last film the last comic book film that i went back to the theaters to see it again and again and again was the original deadpool which is also in my top 15 movies or top 15 comic book films of all time the suicide squad absolutely delivered and hit that nail i can't stop thinking about this movie it is heavily entertaining it is heavily bloody and actually really surprisingly heartwarming and emotional now don't get me wrong if you disagree with me that is completely fine but for me with what everything i wanted this film to be i was absolutely shocked and that's why i'm going to put this one also in the s tier there it is, guys. There's my tier list ranking. Let's hear your guys' thoughts down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What are your guys' thoughts? What would your tier list ranking be? Let's hear about it down there, guys. Thank you once again for commenting, liking, subscribing, all sorts of things like that, and just in general watching. I had a blast doing this video, and I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts down below once again. If you guys are new here, make sure to head on over to Samsung Films on how to see films early, and of course, the big thing to you and a big thing to my Patreon supporters, because without you, I would not be able to do this. So, of course, until next time, stay classy.